gospel of Jesus Christ is the solution to the woes of man. How much of it you know, determines how well you reign in life. Join us. At Shepherd's Love Worldwide, opposite top radio, Circle Accra, as the man of God, Apostle Johnsburg, takes us through sound teaching, and instruction in the word. Shepherd's Love Worldwide, making Christ prominent, in our generation. Now, the one day when we see Jesus, we'll just be singing to the man, hey, the whole day, yes, sorry, no, sir. Hey. Yes, sorry, no, sir. Yes, sorry, no, sir. Ah, just worshiping the man. Hey, have you made the Come to think of it, have you made the hmm? This is how we are snatching men from fire. Preaching the gospel to them. Believe and be saved. Believe the gospel and be saved. Believe the gospel and be saved. Imagine. You just came to this world. Lived at Kokumlimle. And then you are going to hell. Straight from Kokumlimle. Hey. <laughs> straight. <dude. laughs> straight. Straight. Straight from Kokumlimle to hell. No transit. No waiting anywhere. Hey. It means that there's a way from Kokumlimle that can lead to hell. You'll be shocked. I always say that all the men who have died, right, and they did not get born again and they died, if they are released now to the earth, they are not coming for houses and cars and things. They just, they just first will believe the gospel and then they tell, they tell their friends and they say, Charlie, believe the gospel and be saved. Believe the gospel. This thing is too real. And you know, you know if somebody were even to come like that, people would still say, oh, you are confused. Hey. <laughs> anyway, but now, Jesus is talking, he says, but now I go away to him And none of you ask me, where are you going? So he was talking to the disciples. Yeah, I'm leaving. And as I'm going, you are not asking me, where are, where are you going? Uh-huh, verse 6. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Next verse, please. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. So the helper is here as an advantage to us. The helper is an advantage. It look, it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not, that is the Holy Spirit. He will not come. He says, it is for your advantage. So the Holy Spirit is an advantage that we have as Christians. The Holy Ghost is an advantage. In fact, he's your comparative ad advantage. The Holy Ghost is your advantage as a Christian. It's the advantage that we have. He says, if, if I do not go, it's an advantage. The helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So, the Holy Ghost is here. We saw last week that he's here on the account of Jesus. He's here on the orders of Jesus. Remember, I said in the Old Testament, we saw flashes of him, glimpses of him. He comes and he goes. He can come upon them in the Old Testament. His choice servants come on them, use them for whatever assignment, then he goes away. Only special occasions, he entered them, and it was for a moment. But Jesus now formally, officially introduced his ministry on the earth. Jesus officially introduces his, his person. And last week, one of the things we said was the Holy Spirit is not a dove. That he descended on Jesus like a dove does not make him a dove. The Holy Spirit is a person. The person of the Holy Spirit. He is a person. He has feelings. He can talk. Doves don't do this. Since you were born. Maybe a dove landed on your roof and said, and you were passing and said, Hey, Kwesi! Kwesi, what will you do? You, you remove your tokota. 
and ran away. At the honor, I was asking you that, you know, I was telling you that a man of God said, if you give birth to a child today, and tomorrow morning, you wake up and the child is three feet, what will you do? You give birth today, tomorrow morning, early in the morning, you wake up, the child is three feet, the child doesn't say, yo, yo, daddy, what will be the action? You, you may throw the cellular away and run. <laughs> because, you see, it's not natural. It's not natural. There's a natural process. It's step by step. You may not see it, but you may not see yourself growing tall. You know that. You may not see yourself growing tall. You may not, you may not feel like, hey, today you woke up and you are like, one leg is gone. One, no, it's not one leg. It doesn't happen like that. But over time, you discover that ah, I have become big. I have put on weight. Some of your dresses, you try it on. You say, hey, when did I gain this weight? Ladies always have a problem with weight. Ladies, always. Always. And I, I believe that I speak for most, most guys when I, when I say the, the same stresses that I've been making their dresses. They should take time with the thing, the, the design thing they do. Because ironing it, you are not there to iron it. <laughs> I believe I speak for most guys. What? <laughs> and then and then you come and give us issues at home. <laughs> I mean, when, when you iron it, they say you have not done it well. I mean, <laughs> I, I think I speak for I speak for all almost guys for, for my <laughs> oh but if, if it's not my cry he irons his mother's dress ah so <laughs> I mean I think we won't take that again this year no no this year we won't take that this year we won't take that this, enough is enough I mean, be be a bum when you say now why you now more forty forty. Has it now? Now they come and give you an issue at home. Oh, be be out there on the privacy. They say I have no energy. You are having a say. I mean, so now me go to a time. I told you, my wife, like I can't again because I think I've done the thing. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 you can't. Who you design be an amount of yeah, you go at Who allow that? No, this year who allow that? No, no. Ah, who allow that? Shada shada. When you do that, follow them to the house. Make sure you stay in their house. <laughs> Man of God, get on with it. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. So the Holy Ghost is an advantage. Now, why will you not want this advantage? Why will a person not want to use... How can you have an advantage you are not using? You have an advantage, you don't want to use it. You see, it's not a shame that the helper is helping you. It's not a shame. Jesus calls him the helper. So if the helper is there and I say, Helper, I receive your help this week. I receive your help all my life. It's not a shame. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to... You know, the best of ourselves is nothing. The best. We are men helped by God. We are men and women helped by God. We are men and women helped by God. An example is when we pray. When we pray, we are simply saying we have no help in ourselves. Intervene. We are, we are, we are, we are imploring a higher power to come into our affairs. Intervene because we can't do it. Intervene. Intervene. Now, formally, the Holy Spirit has been brought formally, officially, as the helper. He says, but if I depart, I will send him to you. So he is here on the orders of Jesus. He's not here to do what he likes. He's here on the orders of Jesus. Beware of any Holy Spirit that does not talk about the finished work of Jesus. Beware of any meeting you go to and they say the Holy Spirit manifested. 
And they didn't say all the things they were saying didn't throw more light, didn't support, didn't agree with the finished work of Jesus. There's a problem. The Holy Spirit, a Holy Spirit which will see a Christian and call him a sinner, is not Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit which will see a Christian and call the Christian a sinner is not Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit knows, you see, you can't be born again and unborn again. Your character may be wrong. You see, your behavior may be wrong. But you are saved. This, this, these are basic truths. It may sound hard to someone. Hey, how can I be saved? Are you saying that I should continue? The Bible never says, no. The Bible talks about godly character. And this is what constant teaching will do for you. Constant teaching will take bitterness from your heart. Take adultery from your heart. Take fornication from your heart. By first begins by teaching you how loved you are by God. How loved you are. So, next verse, please. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So the Holy Ghost has his work cut out. He has his scheme of work given to him. What he is here what? to do. He said he will convict the world. He will not convict the church of sin. He will convict the world. Is the world because, you see, is, is, remember, one day we read the scripture. I said, don't follow the crowd. The mindless, godless crowd. Godless. It's a sinful world. You convict the world of sin. So, our duty is to preach the gospel. The duty of the Holy Ghost is to convict the men. Now, nobody has been made assistant Holy Ghost. Nobody has been made personal Holy Ghost. Now, because... Some of us want to be the ones convicting the people of sin. Some of us, that's, that's what some of us do. We want to be the ones convicting the people. The guy lives here and he feels so terrible. It's the duty of the Holy Spirit. It's the duty of the Holy Spirit. The Bible said... When, when, Jesus, when Jesus walked the, the, the road to Emmaus with the two disciples and he began to explain the scriptures and they now saw who he was later. The Bible said, did our hearts not burn when he was talking? Did our heart? So that's what the Holy Ghost does. As you are talking to the men, he pricks their hearts. He sets aflame their hearts. Did our hearts not burn within us? That's what the Holy Ghost and it is convicting. He convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin because they do not believe in me. You see, this is the, the what? This is the world. This is the world. Of sin because they do not believe in me. You see, in God's mind, there are two categories of people. Believers and unbelievers. In God's mind, there's no Ghanaians, Togolese, so and so and so. No. In God's mind, when he looks at the world, he sees the church and he sees unbelievers. Look, he will convict the world of sin because they do not believe in me. You convict them of sin because they do not believe in Jesus. Brethren, it's a very big thing to believe in Christ. I was telling you that it takes the Holy Spirit, you can see, it takes the Holy Spirit to even believe the virgin birth of Jesus. This is a proof. Because naturally, how can a virgin give birth? How can I believe this? How can I believe that a virgin became pregnant? Yesterday we were going home and a man of God was preaching on the radio and he mentioned something. I don't even know. It's a medical term. 
medic, you know, before the woman give birth, you must dilate to a certain centimeter. Then the baby can come out natural birth. And and he said, in the cases of a virgin, like a virgin medically, your hymen is not broken. So how then do you dilate? Medically. Medically. We are virgin, so it means that your, your hymen is intact. No wonder Mary asked the angel, how can these things be? Since that I, seeing that I know not a man. And the angel's answer was, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. It means the shadow of the Holy Spirit will be bigger, will overwhelm your own shadow. That's, that's in plain terms. So, you can't even believe the virgin birth of Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. You can see it in this verse. You convict them of sin because they do not believe in me. So you actually need the Holy Spirit to believe this. And then, and then you believe the resurrection of Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit to believe that Jesus rose again. As for dying, anybody can believe he died. Anybody, so somebody died, oh, he's not the first person to be dying in the world. But to rise again, that's where the, the, the Holy Spirit's job comes in. You convict them of sin because. Next verse. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Next verse. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Who is the ruler of this world? Satan. Lucifer. He said of, of, of judgment because the ruler of the, he is judged. The devil is just trying to get a lot of people with him to go down. He, 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 I'm sure he, every time he has a big blackboard or something there, big one, and he's giving them notes. And he's telling, the, he's telling his, his HODs. He has HODs. I'm sure the devil has HODs. So every, every week or whatever they meet, and then he's showing them young men. Young men, these are the people who are getting saved every day. What do we do? We have to do a reprisal attack. Young men, because we, we understand. Can't you see that the time is going? The end is almost... We can't go down alone. Then one guy gets up. Sir, I'm blinding the eyes of people in this place. Blind more, blind more. How many people? Blind them. The ruler of this, Lucy, his lot has been cast. His, the decision has been made. What will become of the devil? Don't you see it in Revelation? A decision has been uh, taken on him already. Next verse. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus wanted to tell them plenty of things, but I said, oh, you can't understand it. Thank God for people like Apostle Paul. You can see that some of the things Jesus would have loved to share. Through the Holy Spirit, he came to what? Share it. Look, look, you can see, he said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. However, when he, the spirit of truth, to so another name aside helper again is what? The spirit of truth. When he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Ghost is the one that guides us into all truth. So, so it's possible to tell the Holy Spirit, tell me the truth about this, this person. Because he said he will guide you into all truth. Tell me the truth about this thing. Dear Holy Spirit, tell me the truth about my family. Tell me the truth about this, this place. You may, you may go and rent a property for business and nobody may tell you what has gone on there prior to you coming to use the place. And everybody, they, you may meet the house owner or whoever and they say, oh, I had there a camera. I had there, you know, when they want their money, they just say, oh, everything is okay. Oh, this place is a good place. It's the Holy Spirit that can reveal to you whether it's a good place or not. It's the Holy Spirit that 
can reveal these things to you. Tell me the truth about A, B, C, D. Because Jesus said, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Hey! What an advantage. He will tell you things to come. Hey! What an advantage we have. He will not speak on his own authority. He will be guiding you into truth. Last week I was telling you, maybe, maybe you think that your, your um, biological clock is ticking. So you want to get married. And then there are four guys around you. Everybody is acting nice. How do you know who is best? Because sometimes, it, in fact, there are a lot of records to show that sometimes those, some people can behave nice when they want you. After they have married you, they now show you pepper from, from uh, Ati Avi. They now show you pepper, pepper from Ati Avi that has been grown for five years. They, seriously, some can even go, go to the extent of following you to church. Following you to church, you following you to church. So no problem. He's in church. He's in church. He's in church. Then he convinces everybody that he's a good guy. And maybe maybe backstage, he's showing you pepper, but when you come out, it's not like that. It will be very hard for some of the things that will be said about some people, for you to believe it. Because that's not how he behaves. This, are you saying this brother who is calm, this brother who is calm can be doing that and some of these guys, the way they can post scriptures on their status. Some of these sisters, the way they can post. So you, you will not, like, they are unassuming. See, ah, the guy who has been posting a lot of songs, Christian songs, every day a Bible verse. The one who puts a Bible verse did this to you. Oh, you don't understand these things I'm saying. Yes. But backstage, when you match their character, every morning you put one Bible verse. In the night, one Bible verse. And you may see it and say, ah, social media is deceptive. Oh. Social media is deceptive. Very, very deceptive. It's good to put a Bible verse. We all put Bible verses. But social media is too deceptive. You can't know somebody on the internet. That's why even church, you can't be pastored on the internet. You have to be in a church. Belong to a church. I've always said it. And the word says that. After you believe, you belong. After believing, you belong. belong if he calls us sheep, then we must be in a fold. Because no sheep can grow astray. You can't do it. It's not free range. It's all, me the me did you or how, and then me did you or how, and then me did you or how. No. Haven't you seen the idea he creates? He creates an idea of harmony. That everybody is together, and then there is a shepherd. I, that's the picture he creates. So, I always say, after believing, you belong. Belong belong. Be, because the church is a family. Be part of God's family. Be part of it. Be part. Part of it. Open grazing. When I like, that's when I go. When I like, that's when I do. Some won't join anything in church. When they close, he take it back, he's go. He's going away. He says, ah. One pastor says, Amen! He's at the door. He's like, everybody, you know, no, don't talk to him. I used to be like that in the Catholic Church. I used to be like that. When we close, when you go to church, they are now, the people who have sent you, the older people we have followed, they are now having a meeting. They are now talking to this friend. My grandmother will greet everybody in the church before we go home. And you are now saying, oh, God, 
as you are, you are almost out, you know, say, eh! and they have terms. You know, say, hey, in the, you know, hey, they talk, and they say, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, my friend, my friend. Say, oh, God, can we just go home? Now, how will you know? How will you know? You have some money. You have been able to raise some money. You want to go into a business. How will you know this business is okay? If you are not engaging the person of the Holy Spirit. Because people have lost their investment. People have lost their... I'm sure somebody picked big money and went to invest in men's gold and the next day See, the reason for the high blood pressure and things in the system, some of them, <laughs> one, one bad mistake, one bad mistake may cost you dearly. But you see, we can see we have an advantage. God has not destined that we have setbacks. No. I was sharing with you at the all night that Bishop Oedipo was sharing a story. And he said he had a friend. The friend was working in a company that was doing well. And they were paying them okay. Every year they, they change their cars. Yeah, they give them a lot of benefits. Things were going well. And then suddenly this guy just got up and switched jobs, went to another company. You know that thing, some companies they come and poach you. And they, they offered higher money. He said one day he was driving somewhere, he met the guy, the guy was walking somewhere, he looked messy. So he asked the guy, he said, ah, why, why are you looking like what's wrong? The guy said, oh, where he went to? They paid the salary for some time and now they don't pay again. They can't pay. So no job, nothing. Sometimes a door can open for you and you think it's from God. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. To be able to know, is this door from God? Is this opportunity from God? Not when you hear USA, you take your bag. Once you say, you know, there are some people who may see a visa to Pakistan. It's not. It's, a, it's, a, it, it's in your mind. <laughs> like, there are even men of God. There are even men of God who see an invitation to Saudi Arabia to preach as ish, and an invitation to Canada to preach as breakthrough. But you were in church about three weeks ago when we saw that Paul wanted to go to a certain region to preach. The Bible said the Holy Ghost would not allow them. Because what they were needed was Macedonia. You see, there, there can be several. That's why the Bible says the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So, something can be good. It, it can be acceptable. And then we have the perfect one. This is God's perfect will for you. This is God's perfect will for you. This God's perfect. Some of them, having said that, to some of them must travel to this country. So it's about knowing God's will for your life. Not just following the crowd. Oh, this thing seems like a good thing. Can I also do it? Look. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is able to reveal what. So, in a case where I'm, I'm talking about marriage, I say somebody comes, they are proposing to you. You are hitting a certain age, you want to get married. And then you, which one should I choose? Because entering is, is, not, is not difficult. It's coming out, because the day you want to say you will leave this marriage, in our society, your parents will come in. Your pastor will come in. Your friends. And then uncles and aunties you are shy of. Will come, like, all these avenues will be exhausted before then now, they now say, do what you like. And they come in, they don't come in once. They may keep, well, ask some people, their parents have been coming every week. So that's why you have to get it right. It's not, it's not a rush. You have to get, so they are all coming, they are all smiling. This one buys you jollof this week. Every, every lunch break, he's sending you lunch food. He's sending you something with drinks, with ice cream. Sending you stuff, and you are looking at it, you are saying, Ah, this guy must be a good guy. You tell him this weekend I'm going to market to go and buy this. 
Some guys can even follow you there. He follow you and wait. Follow you and wait. Then he's doing machukaya. You know machukaya. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes how you see it, that is not how it is. And it is the, it's only the Holy Spirit that can let you see how real or what exactly something looks like. What exactly something looks like. That's why we, we need the Holy Spirit. Like we need to allow him to have the full control of our lives. We really need to release ourselves to this man. Take charge of my life. Take charge. Take charge. Help me make the right decisions. Because a decision can cost you. One wrong decision and that's it. One wrong decision. You may make a decision with your emotions. And it may turn out to be wrong. But you can't go with the Holy Spirit and fail. In Isaiah 9, 6, one of the names they called Jesus. He said he's a counselor. The Passion Translation says extraordinary strategist. Can you put it down? So we have somebody who has what? Strategies. In fact, you can be in a situation and the Holy Spirit will give you an idea. Bam! It takes you out. Right? The man, eh? So brethren, all I'm trying to tell you is that open up more and more to him. Some of you, you open up to your friends. That's okay. You have somebody you talk to. That's okay. But the best person you can talk to is the Holy Spirit. The best person. You see, he will listen and not make any judgment. He will, he will listen and not, and not mock you. Some, may, some of you may talk to people and then when you go back, they are laughing at you. You may not know. There are people that may tease you. When you tell them this and this has happened to me, they say, oh, sorry. So when you leave, they say, nonsense. Or tiara. They say, aha. Uh -huh. And then they may call the next friend. They may ask you left or you are done with the call. They call the next friend. Have you heard? This is what has happened to him. Some of you may have friends like that. Sometimes when we lose some friendships, we think that we have lost certain things and we are crying. But it's actually the Holy Spirit taking away traitors from our lives. It's actually the Holy Spirit pruning our lives. If you have a garden and it's overgrown, when the gardener comes, what they do is what? They prune, they try to cut some of the hedges and so that the, the beauty of the thing can be maintained. Some of the friendships and things we have lost is the Holy Spirit orchestrating it. Because you may not see you today, but what would have happened in the next years? Somebody was sharing with me that last year was when their ministry suffered a, a, like a lot of disloyalty. Like intense one. Intensive disloyalty. It, from people he didn't even expect. From people he didn't expect. They shocked him. And I said, yes. That's why you see, he tells us to, to trust him alone. Trust him. Put your trust. Like these things will happen. So put your trust in the man. And it's very painful. He was, he was sharing with me. I said, oh, really? <laughs> it's, I know Moja Epic. Any Umoja Epic, a Faba. A Faba. Somebody said they sent somebody to school. And then the person came out and joined another church. Says and went, went to another church with what he had gone to learn from the account. <laughs> And you can't come and say it. Because when you say they say you are bitter. You are bitter or something. So you just say, hm, if I hear him. So he was sharing with me. Then he said, in the midst of it all, he became broken. Then he went into prayer. He didn't even have, have the strength to talk about it. He went into prayer and the Holy Spirit told him, I'm pruning your ministry. I'm pruning this. Don't worry. It looks like they have left you. But it's, it's good for you. Hey. Sometimes people dating in church. 
You don't know the, the issues that have come. Somebody is dating somebody in church. And then the pastor says to one person, don't date this. Go and stop the relationship. Because this person, no, he's not serious to help you in this way. Then the, the lady goes and says, pastor said. <laughs> The brother was broken hearted. The brother was, and he, he wanted revenge. And he knew that, Charlie, you are not a good guy. You don't have good intentions for this lady. Then he now went to their, their, one of their top givers in the church. One of their top givers. In, he now went to the person and proposed to the lady. And this lady, too, was desperate for a guy. He now said, okay. And now within four months, they are getting married. What kind of marriage is this? And the man of God is there. They just send him an invite. They are getting married. He told the lady, please, you have now to change your mind about this person before it's too late. You can't come and talk about my husband to be like that. People are blinded by all these things. It's later when things go south. You now say, where is God? You can, you can tell who a person is easily when you have the Holy Spirit helping you. You can tell this, this thing. Let's rethink this thing. This thing. So, you can talk to somebody and then leave. You, you think you have a friend in this guy. You, you think this guy is your best friend. He's a best friend to another person. He's a best friend to another person. In fact, that's mostly the case. You think, oh, you, this is the person I share my secret with. Your secret is another secret somewhere. That is why, you see, the only person who is proven all over the years, very proven, men who have worked with him, you see, he, 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 when something happened, he doesn't say, I'm not part. I didn't know. Oh, the Holy Ghost, only you woman. He will not tease you. I said he can listen to even the negative things you have done. There are, there are people who have made mistakes and everybody was insulting them. Everybody was insulting them. A pastor was sharing an, a, an issue like that some time ago. We are having a discussion. He said, hey, one of my members did this thing with one of the ladies in the church. You know what they did, right? And it was so huge, I had to now come in and then solve the issues. And then everything was okay. Then later, one day, one of the ladies tempted him. This man of God, he said, one, he, said he fell for it. Hey, Jesus. He, was, he said, man of God, like, I, I didn't know, like, there was no strength to resist. And then, the lady now started, you know that thing, like, huh, I'll, I'll show that this started demanding hey, and the issue now spread that he couldn't meet the demand the issue now came out he said the one he had stood up for years ago was the one leading the church this pastor is fake this pastor he said you I covered your shame people he has been praying for they were now insulting him they, oh this man I knew it I knew it. he said but when I went to the Holy Spirit in tears he did not judge me he did not judge me. He was rather strengthening me, encouraging me. Encour he said, I wanted to go to my hometown and kill myself. Nobody will find me. It's amazing, you know. Sometimes you think you have somebody who is a friend, but they are actually not a friend. It's the Holy Spirit who can help all these. Look, he said, for a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, he he showed this responsibility and is called extraordinary strategies. Or was strategies. Or was stra or like or was strategies. You may be in a situation and say, ah, how do I come out of this? The Holy Ghost knows how to bring you out of it. Things may not be working. You say, ah, oh, then I mean, I, mean, I, saw, I saw a video one time. Santo, he said, and I mean, I go keeper. He said, <laughs> he said, 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 He
me said ya me wo yin so de me yeti ayi de ye bobo no fast ra obeti go say ana me nko ye goalkeeper maybe you are at that point of your life where you are thinking because i've come to realize that people may be smiling but they are going through a lot they may be smiling with you like he must <laughs> yes sir, yes sir. but inside them you see and it's only the gospel that can help men i said have you not come to church i was teaching the message like this you you left and you felt encouraged encouraged you see, that the solution is the gospel the man as we are we are heralding the man heralding the victories we are helping men unknowingly we are helping men extraordinary strategies he has strategies man no oh, he knows hey no matter what may come in your life he knows the way out he proved it in the lives of the disciples peter was almost killed the holy ghost came there found a way the gate open they thought the prison gate had been locked they didn't know somebody had the master key they thought they had the key. Somebody had the key. They, he said when he got there, he opened on his own accord. Nothing is hidden from this guy. Nothing is hidden. So, brethren, as we are doing this teaching, be more and more yielding and yielded to the Holy Spirit. Yield yourself more and more. Give yourself. Give yourself. Give yourself. Last week I was telling you, practice his presence. And one of such ways is acknowledging him all the time thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you thank you thank you for this thank you for this thank you for my life thank you for my week thank you that i go out and have a good week thank you as i go out i have a good day thank you that you help me make the right decisions any decision you have to make under pressure don't make it they put pressure and say sign sign this thing don't sign it most of the times you will make the wrong decision most of the times is the wrong one you will choose when they say right now right now right now and then you went to the hospital they said you have to do this surgery now now it is that same now you will tell them i need to use the washroom that's what pastor b said so if you want because it, apparently the number of surgeries they must do for their license to be renewed So the guy is standing there. He has done four. He's left with one. Once you come with a small case, we have to do surgery. Any decision you have to make under pressure, don't make that decision. Always go back. In Acts 15, they said, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Not to put any burden on you. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit. What is good for him is good for us. I think Acts 15, 28. Acts chapter 15, verse 28. Always put him first. Put him. He knows the earth more than you. Because when the earth was formless and voidless, he was the one who hovered over the earth. Where, where, where was your hometown chief? It's good to listen to advice of your parents, grandparents, but sometimes the advice does not work. The person whose idea works all the time is the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. When he gives you an, an idea, the Holy Spirit can give you one business idea. And that's how, that's how you'll be taken out of poverty. For life. For life. Oh. He will open your eyes. You see, make these things your daily confessions my eyes are open to opportunities men don't see my eyes are open my eyes are open the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see what men are not seeing because it may shock you that in your neighborhood as you walk by you drive by every day there, there's a, a venture there's a business venture there but you don't see it you don't see it You don't see it. Who would have thought that create, uh, collecting rubbish will now make you a millionaire? Look at Zoom Lion. Bola Sujata. 
Hey, the money they have made. These are hard Christians, though. Hard Christians. Hard Christians. He said he had a dream. He used to have the dream consistently, seeing himself on the baller. Elsewhere, somebody would have said, Hey! Hey! Ketana na 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 Ketuna na 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 vadia Hey! Hey! Somebody said, Pastor, I, I saw myself eating in a dream. I said, What food? He said, I didn't like the food. I said, Go back. Let them prepare the food you like. He said, My mother told me that when you eat in a dream, it means this. Hey! He said he used to see himself in a dream. Imagine somebody would have packed his things and gone to Achia. And just and says, Hey, that you there a repetitive 50 times. They will say me, yeah, come to it. Three months. The chest rolls, ah, me, yeah, come to it. The bar. The Holy Ghost can give you, see, the Holy Ghost knows how to introduce you more than you can introduce yourself. You see, Jesus said, when you stand before the Sahindrin, he said, don't speak. I'll give you words. I'll give you words. Take these things with you when you are going for interviews. Take these things as you are going. You see, you may have prepared. But no preparation is enough. You may think, oh, you have read about the company. When did they start? They started 2004. Where is their headquarters? In Sawom. How many staff? 2004. Who is the head, Mr. Mr. Ba? You may have read all these things, but you see, the best of all is to trust the Holy Spirit. I know when I enter that place, you will give me words. You will give me words. What, what, have you not gone for an interview? They ask you something you didn't read. And you now sit down and say, um, 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 actually, <laughs> actually, the Holy Spirit wants to practically help us. Practically. Some of us, you who Holy Spirit didn't tell us some dating will not have dated is wasting of time. Oh, it's wasting of time. It's wasting of time and money. Oh, seriously. Oh, wasting of time and money. You, you have wasted your time, wasted money. Like when you just know that, oh, Charlie, consider this person. Or wait for me. The word would have been wait. Don't vent, wait. You know, the, the word would have been what? Wait, wait. Wait. It's because you, these things seem like, oh, a creepy. Because you, somebody proposes to you, you accept on your own authority. Somebody proposes to you, you don't. When, when, when did someone propose to you and you ask the Holy Spirit whether this, I should accept it? You just say, oh, he proposed to me, I like him. I just, let me just accept. When you now say, hey, ah, what is the Holy Spirit saying about this? Hey, what's who there? Me there are. Because trust me, when there is an approval, you, you know that Charlie, he has approved the thing. Oh, Charlie. But most times we don't do that. We just say, Charlie, this, this baby is fine. Oh. And then you become a friend. You become a friend to the baby. And then you are chatting with her. And then you work your way out to the point that she will now be your, like you'll be talking every day. At first it's hi, hello. Then now you, you get her attention. In fact, you catch her attention. And now you talk every day. Now you are her go to person. When you check her call log, it's, it's you she will call all the time. She will call all the time. Now you have become like that. Then oh, you just say, oh. I think we should just date. And she also says, yes. But you see, where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this? You, you, that's how you, you may also start a business in a happy mood. You know that. You can, you can meet a friend and say, ah, it's been a long time. You are, oh, how about you? Why not start a business that deals with cars? Then quickly over there, you met at the mall. You were having some drinks. You just say, oh, let's, start, let's start a car business. We didn't pray about it to know whether this is God's will for our life. We once, we once did a business like that. 
Was it an international? See, if if we, we will be yielded, I'm I'm not telling you things I've not done. I'm telling you, like some of the mistakes we would have we have made, we would not have made them. There was a business which somebody introduced to me. The person introduced it to me, me or me. And I went for the presentation. I, I'm not mentioning any name. <laughs> A certain business. <laughs> Two hours I was in the meeting. And I was listening. And you know they were convincing us. <laughs> and I was convinced. I was convinced. <laughs> I said my God. And you know by God's grace I'm attempting to be a good person if I'm not a good person I'm attempting to be a good person in the sense that when I got the opportunity I also came you see my friends are the, the members in the church so I also came to them and said guys ladies this is what I've heard oh. this this, <laughs> this, is the, this is what I have heard so do you know what? Let's all meet at so and so place and also go and listen for yourselves. If you are convinced, we can. We all went there and we listened and then everybody was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so I had a few questions. But, you know, he's, 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 Charlie, he's one of the sharp guys. One of the top, top accounts guys. Sharp, like sharp guy like no be more fool sharp like he get hit <laughs> literally <laughs> i just remembered a guy we used to call yichu you know <laughs> The, the, the full name was Gaicho. <laughs> oh, Kale, Nungwa is one of the interesting places. Oh, now they used to call the guy Gaicho. <laughs> Why? He said, All the guns, their head is in his head. Gaicho. <laughs> so, Kale is one of the top, top, top accounts guys. So, you know, he was trying to draw our attention to a few things. But we felt like, you know, this is a good... To, why are you trying to delay a good opportunity? <laughs> you know, we were now giving him that Ufrihin's look. Ufrihin, like, oh, are you too... Ah. You know, sometimes you may be making a wrong decision and somebody is alerting you. Why not take it? Oh, do you too... Ah, why? Oh! 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 Ah. It's because you don't have a child. That's why. It's because you are not married. That's what. If you are married, you are not married. So you want me to be like you. Sometimes it's not like that. If we would trust this, this man well. You see, they said, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. They put the Holy Spirit word first. It seemed good to him, then to us. They didn't say it seemed good to us. And the Holy Spirit. No. It seemed good to him. What it is good for him is good for me. I said, employ some of these tactics and see how your life will turn out. You don't just walk down the road, a guy, because it's it's so difficult to tell who is good and who is not. It's too difficult. Now, some of the guys they just wear kaftan. Behind the kaftan, they show you pepper. The guy wear kaftan and half shoe, half shoe, <laughs> half shoe, and he, he, he has some nice Range Rover, and he packs it with some heavy perfume, and you now say, "Oh God!" And maybe he comes around a time where you are so low on cash, and he's giving one one momo bar three thousand CDs. You now say, "Ish, all my exes, nobody ever gave me this one. This is a good, this is a breakthrough." It may be a breakthrough. It may be. But it may also be something else. I said, we went for this business. That day we registered. 
we register. I, is it? I don't know whether I told you. I brought my mother in. <laughs> I, you see, <laughs> the, the generational wealth. <laughs> I collected her money and said, "You can't go for the presentation. I've gone, and I've gone twice, so it's good." So give me your money. They said, you need this amount and you will do this. I said, give me the money. As I took the money and, and they wrote her name. And then she received the text message and all that. And then Samamu was doing it. He met some people somewhere and sold some to them. Charlie, eventually we realized that guy. <laughs> we just realized guy, guy. Ancha Faka. Kai Komi. Kazo, Kenimi, Gine, Kazo. We just realized, Ale, 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 this, 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 this is not it. <laughs> we just, and whatever we lost in it, we just counted it badang. <laughs> we counted our loss and just, Ale, we just look somewhere. And now when we remember, we just remember and laugh. You see, you can make a wrong decision and you can be happy about it. Oh, you are in a good mood. You make a wrong decision. This is why this man, allow him, give him more time. Please, next verse. What were we reading before? Okay, let's continue. Next verse. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So the Holy Spirit comes to what? Glorify Jesus. That is why I said, be, be careful of any voice of any Holy Spirit that doesn't glorify Jesus. Glorifying Jesus means that he will herald the cross and the victories from the cross. Ah, and a Holy Spirit that I said, the Holy Spirit that will call you a sinner is not Holy Spirit. If you are if you are if you are not born again and you are referred to as a sinner, that's the right word. The one who is not born again is a sinner, according to the Bible. So that's Bible language. There's English language and then there's Bible language. Bible language is that if you have not believed in Jesus, you are a sinner. That's Bible. You might say, oh, but I have not killed anybody. You are a sinner. Now, Bible language is that if you have believed in Jesus, you are righteous. That's Bible language. Now, any Holy Spirit that will come and say, you are unholy. We have to now say, hey. Now, a Holy Spirit that will come and say, hey, you are not a child of God. We have to run away from that Holy Spirit. Why? Because in Romans 8, the Bible said, the Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are sons of God. So, he, he comes to glorify Jesus. It means he comes to throw more light on what Jesus has done. Anytime the Holy Ghost is in our midst, Jesus is what? Glorified. Jesus, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He comes to glorify Jesus comes to glorify Jesus. That's his work. The Holy Ghost, or my own Christo, more and more. More and more. When we say, we want to know Jesus, the Holy Spirit will help us know him. Know him more and more. Any, any Holy Spirit that says something contrary to the truths of the gospel, the foundational truths of the gospel, is not the Holy Spirit. Because there are familiar spirits also set out in the world. Familiar spirits have also been released into the world. It looks like it is from God, but it is not from God. You may even go to the extent of mentioning the name of Jesus. Next verse, please. All the things that the Father... Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Let's, let's read another scripture. We are taking too long here. Let's read another scripture, please. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Now, in the church of Corinth, one issue, one day an issue came, and it was the issue of fornication in the church. Fornication had just, it was rampant. This one is fornicating with this one. You see, I always say that no matter the generation we are in, the word of God will be very consistent. The word of God will stand as truth. The Bible is the oldest book, yet it is consistent. It's not our time that maybe they say the instrumentalists are having something to do with the, 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 the singers. Because they come for rehearsal. They are doing all night rehearsal. And then you see the keyboardist and then one lead auto singer. Now in the church of Corinth had an issue of fornication. And Paul writes back to them and look at what he says. He says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the spirit of God dwells in you. So, your body is what? Your body is... The temple of God is not this building we are using. This building we are meeting in. Understand it. You carry God wherever you go. You are literally the address of God on the earth. You are the address. If we are looking for God, we find you. We are found where God lives. You understand? Do you not know that your body is the temple of your body? Unipediani na sorry dying. You see, then again, when you think about this, then I really must, I really must give myself truly, because your true devotion to God is to present your body, present your body fully to Him. That's your true and real devotion to give your body to God, not my tricky Jesus. The real devotion of a believer is to present him his body fully to Jesus. Your body is his temple. Only Pediani na sorry dying. It's your body. He, he wants your body. He wants your body. Most of us don't take care of our bodies well. Yet your body is his temple. Take care of your body well. Take care of your body well. You just handle your body anyhow. If your body is his temple, treat your body well. Because you know this is God's temple. This body is God's temple. This body is God's temple. Let, no, let nobody cheat you. Paul told Timothy, let, let no one look down on you because of your age. But be an example of, to the believers in word. In purity. Look, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of... They were fornicating, yet he was reminding them that what? Their body is the temple and that the spirit has left them. No! He is in them. He is inside you. The Holy Ghost is inside you. You may say, I am not feeling him, but he is there. Look, next, next verse. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. His, of course, his body will be destroyed. He will destroy your body. When you see some of the people who are falling into some of these sins and all that, you hear them, hey, I've got gonorrhea. I've got HIV AIDS. Your body is on the way to destruction. I, I, I'm sure maybe in the next three weeks, you will start wassoing. You will start popoing. You start popoing. Everything becomes hot and cold. Hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. Then now when we see you on the bed, we now see you basa. You have now become leggy, 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 leggy. For the temple of God is holy. Your body is holy. Present God, present your body to God fully. Serve God with your body. That's what Paul is telling them. Because he lives in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. Acknowledge that he is in you. Acknowledge it. You see, you may you may say, Oh, but I'm just in the kitchen cooking. As you are in the kitchen cooking, you are there with the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Ghost is amazing. 
So sometimes I ask myself, when we go to the washroom and we are releasing flavors, the Holy Ghost is still there. He, 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 he enjoys. Some people, when they enter the washroom, some people, when they enter the Jesus, you have to wait for about an hour. We have to wait for about an hour. No matter the spray we use, it will overwhelm the spray. Yet in all this, the Holy Ghost is with us. He's with us. Because your body is, his, that's where he lives. He resides in your body. He resides inside you. He lives, one day Paul was walking. And he met some brethren at Ephesus in Acts 19. And he asked them, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit? When you believe, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Because it's the Holy Spirit you need to make Christianity easy. Without the Holy Spirit, Christianity is a difficult thing. Without the Holy Spirit, you see, life will be hard. We will be hard pressed. That is why the Bible thankfully calls him our advantage. Our advantage. We need pediani na sorry dying. So, brother, sister, make sure that your body, which is his temple, actually it looks neat, it looks fresh. Honorable body. Last time I was telling you, you don't buy three weeks. Your body is his temple. Unjare, three weeks. Now, Abby, I was, the guys who are on drugs, the guys who are on drugs, now they don't bat because some of the, 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 the drugs they take, when you go and take a shower, Ebeko, so they don't bat. So they say, and you know, drug life is expensive. It's expensive. They have something they call cold techie. Techie, cold techie. When it comes, if you have to even do, you do it and get the money. They break into somebody's car. Take their phone. And they don't sell it for the actual price. Just take your phone. Your phone, your phone that you bought 5,000 CDs. He just walks to the roadside and says, boss, the guy says 50 Ghana. I say, oh, the Fabra. Because he just needs money to fund the craving. Hey, <laughs> boss, the phone will be bombu. Your body is his temple, brothers, sisters. You know, as we are young, you feel that I say oh, your passions. There are some cravings. They are like nibi kume. Like it's like if you are not if you are not doing it, you are not you are not a guy. Then suddenly you realize they have run into all sorts of problems. Because there's a verse that says anyone that commits adultery, he sins against his own body. Now you are pregnant. You are now going to abort. And what, what, what if you go and die in the process? You are aborted and there's a complication. Your womb is gone. What you poured in the it has chopped your womb. Yes. There are people like that. He's walking around. No womb. If there is no miracle, no baby will come. On Namiaria, Dukunu, no say, Ma. You won't see. Ah, you won't see you. You won't see it. You see, oh, Charlie, this guy be fresh boy. Be fresh. Go no, go no, go no. <laughs> it's look at like, Gonorrhea is just doing like ping, ping, ping. Because you didn't treat your body with honor. You didn't treat your body with honor. I was telling somebody that you say, hey, when you marry, the way you have sex, hey, you oh, Charlie, you will marry and boy, where your mind is, uh, <laughs> oh yes, you will do that. But if you, hey, the whole day you want to be doing only this, hey, big man, ah, ah, then maybe maybe your parents have left you with some some inheritance. <laughs> Maybe your parents have left you with an inheritance. They have left you with like, like gold. They have left you with like money, like huge. Because in this world now, <laughs> I, it, it's correct, right? Hey! You see, we meet every day. We meet every day 24 7. Oh, me when I marry. Oh, me there. 
So you are not married, you are rushing yourself. You are in a hurry. You say, hey, Charlie, man of God, can't see the weather is cold. The issues that may come from that pick Uber and come, you will be shocked. Pick Uber and come, I will pay. Oh, just, oh, don't worry. Don't oh, worry, you like that. Five minutes pleasure can, can destroy 30 years of glory. Five minutes pleasure. Now you have become a big woman and they are spreading your picture somewhere. You are going for a ministerial position. They now put your video on the screen. Oh, man of God, flee youthful last. They have now put your, screen, your, your picture there. The WhatsApp chat you were having, they have put it there. They have put your video there. Some may be fake, of course. But they may show a video that you know that, hey, guy, uh, were you not in Ghana? They show people's fathers who had their wives at home. They show people's fathers. You now say, 10, 10 for me, you now 10. Once more, get down to the old man, say, 10, he say, 10, okay, 10 for you. <laughs> your body is his temple. Serve God with your body. 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 Nowadays, they are, they are having a wedding and it's like it's a breast show. Hey, what's going on? And the, the one who is getting married, though, the one who is getting married, Sebi. Sebi. Manus is swimming as We go for, yeah, you see. And they and the girls following them out, they are all naked. If you don't go for weddings and see that me, I go and I see it. I go and I see it. You see, that's you see in our time, you say, Oh, die. I don't know basu. That's the trend. That's the trend now. We will leave the wedding and one groomsman and the girl. They, they will now, the groomsman may be married. You now take one of the girl's number. I mean, you came there to naked yourself. All of them that they are. Like the thing is long here, but over here to here. One day I was preaching somewhere. A lady was sitting here. My pastor didn't come to church that day. They said I should preach. The lady was sitting. She was not wearing anything. She was sitting in front. <laughs> the preacher. <on. laughs> It will amaze you. One day I was I called somebody to pray for the person. The person was braless. Oh, so I had to now pray for another. If <laughs> oh, you will know. I pray for another person. I pray for another person. That please, <laughs> please, because you can't say oh I will not. As for me, hey brother, it's not like that. Too. So that's why you say flee, 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 not. Oh, me there, oh, me. My gym will draw me chrome. Me. Only me draw my. He said, flee, 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 run away. Run away from it. See, the temptations are wild. Run away from it. We can't have a church. We're having a service. Somebody has come wearing something very short and revealing. Come sit at the front. No, go to the back. Go to the back. Tie her with cloth. Tie her with cloth. Tie with cloth. She may be embarrassed next time about a version new one. Am I saying don't look good? Oh, that's not what the Bible is saying. That's not what the Bible is saying. You see, carry yourself honorably as God's temple. Carry yourself honorably. Look good, smell nice. The guys who tell you, don't do your hair, don't do it. those guys, they are villagers. Don't do your hair. Me me poor about why nails. <laughs> One guy will now see you now see you will see all the slim ladies. Then go for a, a lady who is big. And I'll tell her to lose weight. Why didn't you go for that? In Paul Bow, yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, there are some guys when they, they there are some guys women making progress alone is a threat to them. If you marry this one like your husband, this one becomes your husband. 
and your success is, is intimidating him. Hey, instead of him supporting you, oh, Charlie, go higher. Go, Charlie, do it. For you, you have me to our enjoy. When a woman is president, how do they call their husband? First gentleman. There's something. I used to have that village, village idea, but thank God for the scriptures. Thank God for the scriptures. You see, I used to say a lot when we were in SHS that no woman would drive me. I will not sit in a woman's car. Oh, Sir Derek is here. Sir Derek, I used to say when we are talking, I said, me never. Of me now, back I would that me never. I said never. And my friends would be like, hey, Charlie, Charlie, I did okay. Hey, Charlie, I said, oh, me never. Oh, never. I, I thought I was on top, not knowing. You see, I was being a foolish guy. I was being a foolish guy. We came to the university. Things were moving, things were moving. Lo and behold, I began to date Lady Jemima. She had a car. See how everything was okay? She had a car. And open one, my dear front seat. My say, chop it, chop. My dear front seat. Tell it, remember, my dear front seat, my dear front seat, my three years. Three to four years. With the front seat. Hey, now you call her now with the front. Now me my direction for her. Man for her, for her. Those times I didn't know how to drive. Those times. Those times I didn't know how to drive. I'll be in front and I'll be giving instructions. I'll be giving. I say go here, pass here, pass here, don't pass here. And now see, me that said I would never. I, I, you know, you see that, that village, like, I said, why won't you sit in a car? I, it's the car they are driving. It doesn't matter who is driving. Once the person is able to drive, let's go where we are going. See, I'll never sit in a car. And share Bemen Union. These are village. You see, village mentalities. You see, but with the help of the scriptures, these strongholds, you see, strongholds are in the mind. It will be broken. Strongholds. You'll be amazed what people think. Oh, oh as for me, I'll never. It takes the word of God, the teaching of the word of to break these strongholds that have found their way into our minds. And can buy a trick card here? What's wrong with it? Now, I was at the front. And I was very happy. Happily in front. Sometimes she's driving and I'm sitting there and I'm just doing this. I'm taking a video of myself. And one day, one of my guys said, Hey, are you not the one who said? And I said, Hey, mercy, you. Thank God for the scriptures. You see, there's a way that the scripture can be entering you small, small, and it's correcting some things. Correcting things that you have stored in your heart, in your mind. Correcting things. So I said, A guy said, Oh, oh, they did. Me and Paul buy why the nails, why you make up. I said, Go and marry the ones you like. Look good, look nice, but don't abuse your body. Don't abuse your body. Don't abuse your body. One of the things I'm trusting God to do is to be exercising small, small. Yeah, yeah, to be exercising small, small. Tell it's a good thing. The Bible says it profits little. At least exercise small, small. Somebody was convincing me the other time. The person said, and you have to do this, you have to do this. I was, the person was talking plenty. I was listening. I said, okay, 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 okay. And I said, but you know, I work with God. Is that not okay, at least? But working is an exercise. <laughs> the kind of things the person was mentioning, I was afraid. You know, I said, you have to wear this watch to calculate this thing. You have to now put this in. This thing will check your heart. This, I'm like, Ish. I began to be scared. <laughs> But if you can, brothers, sisters, try. If you can, try. Now we exercise Kakradi film. Because your body is, it needs your body fit. It needs your body fit. It needs your body in good shape. 
Your body should be in good shape. Let's close with Acts 19. When you get born again, you must, you must receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You must receive, your hands must be laid on you to receive the person of the Holy Spirit into your life. And the evidence of having the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Somebody say, hey, why is it that when they want to pray that they open their mouth, makababa, hey, the Holy Spirit must come on you first. It's not like that. You say, hey, eh, why don't you speak in tongues? Eh, because I don't speak in tongues because I feel it's my own language I'm saying. So I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to come on. You may wait till Jesus comes. Look at the scripture. And it's happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So after, after people get born again, we must lay hands on them for what? For them to receive the Holy Spirit. For them to receive. It's very important. I said, it, this is what makes Christianity easy and meaningful. Else you just store up scriptures in your brain. And there will be no effect in your life. One day Jesus looked at them. The Bible said, he breathed on them. Then he opened their understanding to the scriptures. Another time, the Bible said he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Very important. Very important. Very, there's no move of God with the Holy Spirit is not ahead of or doesn't lead. Every move of God, everywhere in this world, is the Holy Spirit leading it. Look, Paul said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So, any teaching that says, oh, the Holy Spirit is not in our time, he is not in our generation now. Hey, we know no, our church, we don't believe. You begin to run away. Begin to be scared. Anybody that comes around you says, ah, now that you are, you, you, as you have believed in Jesus, that's it. there's nothing like Holy Spirit. There's, there are some churches like that. Some churches don't believe in the person of the Holy Spirit. They say, oh, it's happening in Bible time. But we, are, we have seen from the scripture, Jesus said, you'll be with us forever. Not Bible time alone. Paul asked the disciples. These were Christians. Paul asked them. Look at the Bible called them disciples. Verse 1. He found some what? Some disciples. They were believers. So now he justifies his question in verse 2. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? So after you are born again, you must what? Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive him into your life. This is what will make a difference. Now, I said, there are, there are churches that teach that you don't receive any Holy Spirit. Oh, nothing. Oh, our church, we don't believe in that. Our church, we don't believe in that. That is why, you see, we don't see results. We don't see results. We don't see results. Some do the Christian things like praying, fasting. They don't see any results. They just do it like a chore. Oh, lest our church becomes like that. Every first Monday of the month we fast. It's like a chore. Like oh, Monday. Not, this is a moment for renewal. This is a moment. It's a special moment. It's a meeting designed to bless me. Look, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. We have not heard. Let, can you have a modern verse? They answered Paul, we don't even know. That's the state of some Christians. We don't even know that there's a Holy Spirit. Oh no, maybe the NIV or NIRV or something. Okay, NLT is fine. NLT is fine. NIV is fine. Let's read. Paul asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. We have not even heard. But they were disciples. So how does their discipleship bear fruit without the Holy Spirit? We have not heard. Next verse. 
So Paul asked them, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. The baptism of water. But you know, John testified about Jesus that his baptism is greater. And it will be done with what? Fire and the Holy Spirit. They said, oh, you know, they had, they had done the Christian things. You can see. Getting born again. And then being what? Baptized. So they may have a baptismal card. But fellowship with the Holy Spirit. They said they don't even know that there is a Holy Spirit. But they are seemingly done the Christian things. Look. Next verse. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in one, in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. Next verse. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, John's baptism was to introduce Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the... Next verse. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. They didn't know. Paul laid hands on them. He said the Holy Spirit came on them. This is why we lay hands. When we lay hands, we transfer gifts. But in this case, hands must be laid for the Holy Spirit to what? Maybe you got someone born again in your hometown, in your workplace, in your area. After getting them born again, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Lay hands on them. Don't be scared. Hey, me too. Can Yeah, you can. Did you arrest people and put them in prison? But look at Paul. You see, God will use any man who is yielded to him. After getting men born again, they must receive the Holy Spirit if they want to see results. Else, it's like going on a journey and leaving what will make the journey easier at home. If I ask you to go on a desert for 30 days without water, will you survive? Go on a desert, hot desert, 30 days. Oh, you have to carry loads of water. What, that's why one of the animals they use on the desert is the camel. Because it, it, when it drinks water today, it takes about 30 days to drink again. It doesn't need water every day. If you take a goat to the desert, if you take a goat to the desert, you and the goat, you will perish. Because it may come to a time, the water that you have stored for yourself, you will be sharing with the goat. So the animal designed for that climate is the camel. Because he doesn't need water all the time. Once he drinks today, it's okay. For, for a long period of time, he's okay. The Holy Ghost is what we need to bring relevance. To see fruits. To see fruits in this Christian work that we have been called to. They were, they were Christians. But they didn't know there is a Holy Spirit. And what did Paul do? Paul introduced the Holy Spirit to them and laid his hands on them to receive it. After getting born again, hands must be laid on you to receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the... Sometimes you may come to church. The man of God may be praying for the people and blow air. <laughs> hey, comedies. If Jesus was in our generation, crowd, they would have said, oh, no, no. Because Jesus also breathed on them. Breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So, somebody may come and say, receive the Holy Spirit. Hey. Hey. I'm sorry, sorry, Abbe. I'm sorry, sorry, Abbe. May the cream I've put in my hair I don't want anybody to put their hand on my head. Because me, these people, I don't like that thing they have been doing. You see, Christianity is in your heart. You see, when you love God, it's your heart. It's your heart. Your face, your face like something they saw in my hometown. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> No, but you see, you see the evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit 
The evidence was what? We are closing. The evidence of having the Holy Spirit in their lives was that what? And then they prophesied. So that, he's the one who fuels these things. He's the one who fuels these things. Speaking in tongues. The evidence of having the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Kola kabashata. Kobaraka sakataka. Rekomokolaba. And they prophesied. They prophesied. They prophesied. They prophesied. As you are going through your week, learn to prophesy. Prophesy your week. Prophesy. This week, opportunities will come to me. I have an opportunity laden week. In the name of Jesus, I have an opportunity laden week. This week, we do not have a call of bad news. You see? But it begins with what? Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled. I said, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, God will, God will what? Substantiate your claims. God will validate your claims. You see, God will stand with you and your words. God will stand with you and your words when you are filled with this Holy Spirit I'm talking to you about. Anything you say, God will stand with your words. God will say, it's true, it's true, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. A situation may be hopeless, but with the Holy Spirit, hope will come. Hope will come. No, you see, hey. the Holy Spirit is able to turn things. That's why I'm just telling you. I'm just, I'm just appealing to all of us. Be yielded to Him. Be yielded to Him. How, how, how do you doubt somebody who knows you inside out? Jeremiah thought he was a guy of his day. He said, Ah, when you were, a, when you were a clot of blood, I knew you. Clot of blood. Clot of blood. Even the sonograph can't see it. Clot of blood. <laughs> when you go for the sonograph, they may tell you wait until maybe, maybe, maybe let's say you are pregnant. You may go, you want to do that. And they say, oh, come back in six weeks' time. By then, the machine can what? Capture it. A lot of blood. He said, I knew you. Before you were formed, I ordained you a prophet. I ordained. How, how will you doubt something? Who knows you? So, from today, as we are, we are closing now, from today, open up yourself. Helper, I receive your help. You are my helper. You are my helper. You are helping me have the best life. You are helping me have the best, make the right decision. You are helping me. Helping me on every front of my life. Helping me. Helping me. Speaking on that tongue.